Welcome to LG Path Labs a monthly pathology webinar series, which is organized by Dr. Limsey Gupta. I thank Dr. Limsey for inviting me uh, to speak today. I'm one of the consultant histopathologists. I'm Dr. Rajiv Prasad, and I work at Queen's Hospital in Dromford in the United Kingdom. I have special interest in uh, GI pathology. Today I will be uh, discussing around uh, cases uh, which are commonly uh, seen in the department. So the entities which I'll be covering today is inflammatory bowel disease, which uh, most commonly comprises uh, ulcerative colitis and uh, Crohn's disease, then diversion colitis, ischemic colitis, and then I would be touching on a few polyps, including sessile serrated lesion, adenomatous polyp, and traditional serrated adenoma. So, our first patient is a 23-year-old male who presents with episodic diarrhea and rectal bleeding. Colonoscopy performed showed granularity and patchy mild congestion and erythema. The diagnosis made was proctitis, most likely Crohn's. So, on histology, as you can see, this is the superficial uh, fragments of large bowel mucosa and what you see are these crypts here, which show very minimal uh, crypt architecture, uh, architecture distortion. Uh, at times, the crypts uh, architecture remain unremarkable as well. And what is most striking here is this granuloma here, uh, and then this patchy uh, distribution of the inflammatory cells in the lamina propria. For example, this area here, uh, you can see it's pretty much unremarkable, whereas it's more busy on this side. Then, uh, on a higher power, uh, what you see is a uh, striking feature again is this uh, granuloma, which is seen in the uh, mus uh, mucosa and also in the submucosa. And this is the muscularis mucosa here. And again, you can see on this power, the crypts are pretty much um, very minimal, I would say, uh, crypt architecture distortion. And uh, there is this patchy uh, distribution of the inflammatory cells. And again, this transmural uh, granuloma here. So the Crohn's uh, uh, disease, the inflammation is uh, more deep. So the features here you see is, as I've explained just now, the crypt architecture, which shows very minimal distortion, uh, submucosal or transmural inflammation. You can have deep fissuring ulcers or fistulas, and then the lymphoid aggregates uh, the, the lymphoid aggregates, um, the characteristic uh, finding you see often is the uh, rosary bead appearance. Uh, by that I mean the lymphoid aggregates at the um, uh, sub uh, serosa, they form like uh, beads of uh, uh, rosary bead appearance. And then the granulomas, which you see in Crohn's, uh, you don't see it in all the cases of Crohn's uh, disease. Uh, usually, the granulomas are present in 50 to 70 percent of the cases. However, if you see a granuloma, that is the hallmark of Crohn's disease. You can also see after ulcerations. Uh, by that, I mean you can see the erosions in the lymphoid uh, follicles. There can be reduplication of the muscularis mucosa or the muscularis propria, and there can be pyloric gland metaplasia. Now, the next patient is a 21-year-old who was admitted with symptoms of bloody stools. The serology and the stool cultures excluded any uh, bacterial and viral etiology. The colonoscopy performed showed diffusely edematous and inflammatory mucosa with erosions in the rectum. So the ulcerative colitis, it involves a distal uh, part of the large bowel and on HNE, what you see here is the surface mucosal ulceration with diffuse inflammation uh, along the lamina propria. Unlike a Crohn's disease where you saw patchy inflammation in ulcerative colitis, you see this diffuse inflammation. And unlike Crohn's disease, here you see more chronicity of the uh, crypt architecture. By that, I mean there will be branching of the crypt architecture, there would be a significant distortion. Then there will be some acute changes, which will be cryptitis, 
uh, patchy or uh, diffuse uh, neutrophilic infiltrate then cryptopsis where you, at this low power magnification you can see the script being filled with neutrophils on a higher magnification what you can see is more striking uh, crypt abscesses all over the place. You can see these crypt abscesses. There would be cryptitis, and also there would be a significant crypt architect architecture distortion. So the inflammated in ulcerative colitis, unlike Crohn's, it is limited to mucosa. Uh, you can see these chronic changes with crypt architecture distortion. You can see how panicell metaplasia. There would be glandular atrophy. By that, I mean the glands, uh, most of the glands would not be reaching the muscularis mucosa. That's a very good sign of uh, glandular uh, atrophy. You can have uh, hypertrophic muscularis uh, mucosa, and you can also see pseudopolyps. By pseudopolyps, I mean there would be a a glandular distortion with uh, inflamed uh, granulation tissue rich stroma, and they will be, uh, they have a polypoid appearances. So there would be acute changes, which I just explained about the cryptitis, cryptopsis, or you can have basal plasma cytosis. Now, there wouldn't be transmural lymphoid aggregates or granulomas, unlike Crohn's. Now, before that, uh, what happens is in a, a biopsy uh, where you can't decide whether this is ulcerative colitis or this is Crohn's, it can be difficult. So what uh, we leave it up to the radiological and clinical a uh, clinical radiological correlation. Uh, it's up to them to decide whether this patient has a Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. And sometimes, uh, when in a resection uh, specimen, uh, you still can't decide. Like for example, you see both the features. You see significant crypt architecture distortion. You see uh, deep fissuring ulcers. And when you don't see granulomas, it can be difficult whether this is uh, Crohn's or this is also colitis. Then uh, we give a category called indeterminate colitis. Now, diversion colitis. So what happens is a patient who has undergone a resection and has uh, been left with a rectal stump uh, can show features of diversion colitis. So here, this is a 51-year-old female with rectal stump, and she was operated three years ago for Crohn's disease. She presented with lower abdominal discomfort, pelvic pain, anorectal pain, mucus discharge, tenesmus, per rectal bleeding, and low-grade fever after diversion. So colonoscopy performed showed iridema, diffuse granularity, and blurring of vascular pattern. Now, on h &E, uh, on a low power, you can see this crypts here, which is pretty much unremarkable. And but what you see most striking is these lymphoid aggregates uh, with prominent germinal central formation, giving the appearances of a follicular proctitis. This is the higher power view. Again, the same thing. You can see this marked lymphoid uh, aggregates with uh, prominent. Uh, 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 lymphoid uh, follicle and germinal center, and you see very few um, unremarkable uh, crypts. So this is uh, due to defunctionalized functionalized bowel with uh, dietary uh, loss of short fat, uh, chain fatty acids, which is normally produced by the gut bacteria. There is marked lymphoid hyperplasia, which resembles follicular proctitis, as you've just seen and there's no architectural distortion. The muscularis mucosa and the propria can be thickened, and there can be fibrous uh, infiltration of the submucosa. Now, sometimes it, what happens is it becomes very difficult because uh, the clinical uh, query is uh, whether this is a diversion colitis or whether this is a residual ulcerative colitis. Now, uh, most of the time, when you don't see uh, crypt architecture distortion, then yes, you can say, and then you don't see uh, acute inflammation, you can say confidently, yes, this is diversion, features are of diversion colitis. But sometimes it can become very difficult when you have uh, the features of ulcerative, ulcerative colitis as well. For example, you can see significant crypt architecture distortion, there would be cryptopsis, cryptitis, um, and ulceration 
then it becomes very difficult. And then uh, you, we usually say that uh, ulcerative colitis cannot be excluded and the features can be both of uh, diversion colitis with uh, ulcerative colitis. So it's up to the uh, clinical radiological correlation. And what you need to be aware of is uh, you have to be very uh, careful about not missing out any dysplasia. Now, ischemic colitis, this is another uh, feature which we commonly um, get in our department. A 61-year-old female with long medical history of severe vascular pathology, and uh, she's got a, she's been uh, smoking heavily since uh, 18 years old, and uh, she's got a pre-existing poorly controlled type 2 diabetes, obesity, and hypertension. So the CT scan showed a segmental colitis involving a splenic flexure and the descending colon. And on colonoscopy, there's seg segmental edematous and hemorrhagic areas uh, surrounding ulcerations, which is covered by pseudomembranes. So this is the HNA picture. And what you see is the striking superficial epithelial necrosis. There is uh, exudate formation with uh, fibrin on the surface and some inflammatory cell infiltrate. Now, this deeper crypts are very well preserved. I would say, and then there is transmural infl uh, inflammation, hemorrhage, and uh, edema as well. And here you can see in this picture that there is complete necrosis and uh, up to the submucosa. This is the muscularis, a layer of muscularis propria in this place here. You can see a bit of infarction as well. So. The features to re remember is uh, necrosis, ulceration of the mucosa, which extends into the submucosa, and hemorrhage and edema in the lamina propria. If you're lucky, you can see hyaline thrombi in the small vessels. There would be sparing of the deeper crypts. Surface exudate will be present, and usually very few inflammatory cells, including cryptopsis, are seen. Okay, so now coming to the polyps. So the polyps, usually the patients present with chronic diarrhea and raised uh, fecal calprotectin. The polyps can be sessile, it can be pedunculated, and uh, what you receive in the laboratory is the polypectomy specimens, which can be uh, incomplete, uh, ex ex completely excised, or it can be uh, in fragments, or it can be a biopsy. So, the I wouldn't be talking about the hyperplastic polyp because that's a very common uh, polyp you see, and all you see in the hyperplastic polyp is the serration. Uh, for example, uh, this is a sessile serrated lesion here, which I'll be talking about. But if let's say examine, uh, sorry, if let's say if you uh, visualize this area here, and uh, there's a superficial from this area, then this could very well be a hyperplastic polyp. But then when you see this full uh, view of this picture and uh, you can see the serrations going right up to the crypt base and there is lateral extension of the crypt base, then uh, this is a sessile serrated lesion. And the interesting thing and uh, the important thing to remember is this is a layer of the muscularis mucosa and when you see this uh, crypt base, you can see as if this crypt base is, is lying on the uh, muscularis propria, it's almost like sleeping on it, it's, uh, forming an inverted T shape. So the criteria uh, for this one is um, you have to have uh, two or three uh, contiguous scripts which demonstrate their features. So this is a pre-malignant uh, polyp and it warranties an increased colonoscopy surveillance. It usually involves a proximal bowel, including the appendix. The bases of crypts are more serrated uh, with lateral spread of the crypt base, as you just saw. And you can, usually they don't have a low-grade or high-grade dysplasia, but then you can have a conventional low-grade or high-grade uh, dysplasia, which you need to be very careful uh, about, and you've got to examine it very carefully. So uh, there's an entity called serrated uh, polyposis syndrome, and the criteria includes one of the following uh, features. Uh, to diagnose a uh, serrated uh, polyposis syndrome, you've got to see at least five serrated polyps proximal to the sigmoid colon with at least two greater than one centimeter in size. 
The other thing is any serrated polyp proximal to the sigmoid colon in a patient with a first degree relative with serrated polyposis syndrome. There should be or there should be more than 20 serrated polyps of any size in the colon. Now coming to the tubular adenoma. So the tubular adenoma is like it's a polypoid uh, small a large ball mucosa showing low grade uh, dysplasia. Now the interesting thing to notice in a tubular adenoma is about the pseudo invasion which you can see here. So that's the most uh, difficult uh, uh, part of the assessment. You've got to be very careful whether you what you see is a pseudo invasion or is it a true invasion. Now this one here which I have put is a pseudo invasion where you can see this displaced. I would say displaced because you can see a rim of uh, muscularis mucosa here. This is the mucosa where you see this area as the polyp and then you can see this uh, disorganized uh, dysplastic glands in the uh, submucosa here. Now to call that uh, why I'm saying this is pseudo invasion is because of the lamina propria infiltrate which these displaced glands carry along with it and along with uh, areas of hemorrhage and uh, you can see uh, hemosiderin laden macrophages surrounding these uh, displaced uh, glands. Now this is an example of a tubular adenoma with true invasion. So this area here which you see is the tubular adenoma with predominantly low grade and high grade uh, dysplasia. Now this is the submucosa and you can see this is a very busy this is the dysplastic glands in the submucosa with this area showing um, this 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 would be um, a mucinous area here so on a high power you can see i've taken this shot from uh, this area and this is the high power view and you can see the severely dysplastic glands and you can see the adjacent stroma around these dysplastic glands which is a desmoplastic rather than uh, containing the lamina propria infiltrate which you saw in pseudo invasion you don't see um, hemorrhage here you don't see hemosiderin-laden macrophages which you saw in a pseudo invasion so if in doubt uh, whether you are in the submucosa, sometimes the best thing to do is the uh, do an S100 uh, stain. What what that would do is that would highlight uh, any uh, nerve uh, bundles. So if if these glands are adjacent to nerve bundles, this means that this is uh, you are in a submucosa. Or uh, if these glands, dysplastic glands, are adjacent to any thick uh, wall blood vessels. So that's uh, invasion. Now, the traditional serrated adenoma. So the Sassan serrated uh, lesion, which we saw earlier, um, that was more proximally. And this one, traditional serrated adenoma, is more distally located. What you see here is these serrations all along uh, the glands, and then uh, the formation of these ectopic crypts so if you see very carefully this is the high power view you can see a lot of these scripts here uh, which are ectopic and then you see uh, serrations all the way and then you see this uh, nuclear uh, pleomorphism and there's nuclear stratification uh, with uh, displ uh, dysplastic nuclei and also if you see carefully here you can see this eosinophilic uh, cytoplasm so you see these pencilate nuclei, long pencilate nuclei uh, with nuclear stratification and the uh, adjacent eosinophilic cytoplasm. So these uh, are very characteristic of uh, traditional uh, serrated adenoma. So that's all I have today. Uh, thank, uh, thank, uh, thank you all. Thank you.